Lord Drac's armies terrorize the people with their savage raids, and no one in the country feels safe anymore. These are troubled times. Darkstone Evil Reigns is a hack and slash action RPG made by French developer Delphine Software and released for Windows PC in September 1999. Players choose from four distinct classes and venture into the land of Uma, where they must find the seven tiers of the goddess Calibur and free the world from the forces of darkness. By 1999, Diablo Clone had already become a recognisable subgenre in the RPG market, and though Delphine acknowledged their debt to Blizzard's original smash hit, they boasted that Darkstone would make players forget about the upcoming Diablo 2. Thus, though the game featured the standard dungeon crawling experience of slaying monsters and surviving deadly traps in the quest for bigger and better loot, Delphine also promised fully 3D graphics, a sprawling overworld map, randomly generated quests, extra difficulty modes, male and female options for every class, an AI co-op partner, and many other smaller additions. Delphine also encouraged custom content, hosting Darkstone modding contests, and even releasing level editing and scripting tools, using a free add-on entitled Journey in Uma to demonstrate their capabilities. Though the game enjoyed fairly positive reviews upon launch, sales were reportedly quite underwhelming. Most reviews called Darkstone a competent spin on the Diablo formula, with praise for its graphics, character animations, and overall accessibility for casual RPG players. However, some critics felt that it was a little too derivative of its forebear. Computer Gaming World dubbed the game Dark Clone, and several reviewers described the hack and slash gameplay as monotonous, with many being especially critical of the game's hunger mechanic. Others dismissed the environments as bland, repetitive, and cramped by the game's limited 3D engine. The majority of reviewers also admitted that Darkstone would almost certainly disappoint fans of hardcore RPGs like Baldur's Gate or Return to Krondor, or those who preferred epic, story-driven experiences like Silver. A port for the Sony PlayStation was released in 2001, but lacked several features of the original and garnered even worse reviews, being slammed as dated, uninspired, and overpriced. The modding community for Darkstone would fade away over the years, as did Delphine Software itself, which closed its doors in 2004. The Darkstone would flicker one last time with a mobile port in 2014, but the game is no longer supported, and has since been removed from the Apple Store. Darkstone lets players pick from eight different characters, representing male and female variations on four typical RPG classes. The Fighter, Thief, Mage, and Healer. Like Diablo, the game then begins in a hub area populated by the typical vendors and craftsmen, and soon enough the heroes will set out on their adventure, braving the darkest dungeons in pursuit of gear, 
gold and glory. You've saved my marriage! Unlike Diablo, though, seven of Darkstone's eight main quests are randomly generated from a pool of various scenarios. When the heroes emerge from the starting hub, the first quest they encounter could be to retrieve a magical cornucopia for a starving hamlet. Or they might find a village where the women have been turned to stone by a jealous old witch. Alternatively, the first quest might be to track down a holy relic stolen by corrupt priests. What all these quests have in common is that the player will eventually find themselves descending three or four floors into a nearby dungeon. There's some variation to their objectives in these dungeons, in that whilst they could just be hunting down a boss monster or key item, they might also be solving puzzles or deciphering a riddle. Finish off this criminal and the door will open. But the basic loop is the same as Diablo. Kill the monsters, grab the loot, level up, teleport back to town to sell everything and repair your gear, but don't forget to unlock your skills. Characters in Darkstone have around seven or eight different skills they'll need to level up between the hacking and slashing. Some of these are shared between most classes, like faster experience gains or martial proficiency, but others are unique to different classes. For example, thieves can pickpocket or disable traps, priests can exercise cursed items or heal allies, Mages can transform into werewolves to deal with magic-resistant enemies, and fighters can forage for food. I am dying of hunger. Characters will begin to lose health as they starve, so you'll need to stock up on food or head back to town and use the inn. But resting will deplete yet another resource added to the Diablo formula. Time. That's right, the heroes will physically age as time passes, with the game giving a rough estimate of six months per dungeon level. Once the players pass 30, they'll slowly start to develop increasingly severe debuffs to their stats and ability to retain knowledge, just like in real life. It's not until much later in the game that you'll start to acquire elixirs of youth to reverse this process, so you don't want to spend too much time in dungeons playing inventory Tetris with your gold. Money, you see, is a physical object in Darkstone, and takes up one inventory slot per 10,000 coins. This isn't a huge issue in the early game, but the player will soon be bombarded with side quests that offer 10k for stumbling into a mini-boss or some random artifact in a barrel, so you'll have to take frequent town portals and dump your retirement plan on the local banker. So, how do these changes affect the typical hack and slash routine? Well, they don't, really. The gameplay loop in Darkstone is pretty much the same as Diablo, sometimes addictive, sometimes a bit tedious. Darkstone lacks some of the refinements other titles made to the loot whoring formula, like the dopamine hit of finding an especially rare drop or part of a unique item set, and the innovations it did add don't add much. Hunger can be an interesting mechanic for a dungeon crawler, as too many games treat dungeons as an afternoon excursion rather than a dangerous expedition into the unknown. But in Darkstone you can easily teleport back to town or find enough food in broken vases, so hunger is just an extra level of annoyance more than anything. Gold has the same problem. At worst, it's irritating to deal with, but you're not going to be making hard decisions about what to leave behind at the bottom of a treasure pit. Aging is, again, something some games have done things with, but it's virtually meaningless in the late game, so only seems to exist to punish people who forget to turn off the game when they go to bed. The ability to create a co-op AI partner was a big selling point at the time. On the one hand, having an ally does slightly diminish the atmosphere of a solo dungeon crawl, but it also lets you experiment more with the different spells and character skills, some of which are completely irrelevant in solo mode. By the goddess Kalibur, come back to life. 
It was quite fun to mess around with the fighter and the healer in the early game, trying to work out how to best synergize their strengths and weaknesses. The biggest weakness of your companions is, of course, their AI, which can be suicidally stupid at times. This wouldn't be an issue in a turn-based or real-time with pause system, but hammering hotkeys across two characters can be a real pain. If I ever develop carpal tunnel syndrome, I'll know exactly who to blame. Finally, the game's big selling point, its randomised quests, have all too familiar pros and cons. They definitely add replayability to the game, but they also mean players have to endure more boilerplate content in between. Delphine kind of illustrated this point themselves in the Journey to Uma expansion, which features more focused, handcrafted content. Still, I'm quite hesitant to dismiss randomised and procedurally generated content altogether. Too many games have taken the easy route and abandoned this system. And if any genre should be able to work with the concept of infinite dungeons, it's the dungeon crawler. Being a fully 3D title was still a big selling point in the late 90s, but it meant making some sacrifices. Darkstone has a lot of bold, bright colours, flickering shadows, impressive particle effects, and moody lighting, but early 3D models had difficulty with concepts like realism or subtlety. Character models have a very Warcraftian look to them, with exaggerated proportions and overbearing stylization, and environments can lack fine detail. I do quite like some things about this approach, like the hulking, broad-shouldered warriors, and no sane person would ever complain about too much décolletage. Wow! But I'm not sure this style fits a dungeon crawler. A lot of monsters, especially the larger ones, look cartoonish and dated. The outdoor environments look straight out of a fairy tale, and the indoor environments don't always seem appropriate to the world. In a small number of cases, there's a logic to them, like a haunted cellar, the Dark Underlord's fortress, or a well leading to a cave complex. But in most cases, they just feel like generic dungeon tile sets randomly mashed together, regardless of what's inside. The randomization is also a problem with the Overland maps, as it's quite obvious where certain areas have been carved out to make space for the various possible quest locations. That isn't to say the game doesn't have its moments, especially in the early game when your character is creeping through the dimly lit hallways with only a torch for company, with no idea what awaits them in the darkness. But overall, I wouldn't say this is a game thick with atmosphere. Another problem with fully 3D dungeon crawlers, which has been borne out by other titles over the years, is that combining a rotatable camera with the traditional isometric style doesn't really bring any benefits. I think most isometric games do a pretty good job of designing scenes around a fixed camera, as they know exactly what the player will be able to see in the game space. Darkstone actually gets a bit lazy with this, as there are times loot will clip through walls or get obscured by debris, and they obviously didn't bother fixing this because they know players can just rotate the camera if need be. I guess some players might enjoy the pseudo third-person camera experience for immersion's sake, but I don't think it works very well. What does work pretty well is the sound design. The usual grunting and groaning of combat is nothing special, but there are some useful sound cues for important events, like a quest item dropping, and reaching certain milestones will earn you a nice oral pat on the back. There's actually a fair bit of voiced dialogue from NPCs, and it's possibly good for a game from the 90s. My good-for-nothing colleague can show you around town. 
Darkstone's soundtrack was composed by Christoph Riemer, and whilst most of the dungeon tracks are essentially not Diablo, which isn't necessarily a criticism, the overworld map has some really nice themes. One unique thing about Darkstone is that it features a song by the French singer Audrin, who was married to the composer. The Darkstone Will Shine is of course incalculably cheesy, but that's all part of the charm, isn't it? A Darkstone fan called Johnny Retro actually got in touch with Audrin, and the song is apparently still commonly requested at concerts to this very day. Speaking of the modern day, I was surprised to discover that Darkstone doesn't seem to have a perfect solution for widescreen and higher resolutions. Although the game world is in 3D, most elements of the menus and UI are not, so you can either run the game stretched or pillar boxed in a wrapper like DG Voodoo, which I misconfigured and didn't notice until a hundred hours later, or download a modified executable from the widescreen gaming community, which results in UI bugs. Sadly, it doesn't seem as if anyone has managed to create a proper working widescreen UI for Darkstone, so I guess it's another case of pick your poison. Still, I can't say running the game at its original resolution is a big problem. Sure, it's fuzzy, but there's not that much detail to be lost in an early 3D game anyway. Found the crystal of wisdom, but there are six more crystals to be found. In Darkstone, the universe is controlled by two primeval forces life, manifested in the form of the goddess Calibur, and death, which seeks to corrupt and destroy. Over time, life created the races of Uma such as dragons and men to battle the darkness, and death would, in turn, twist and corrupt these races. At the height of death's power, mankind were afflicted by madness and jealousy, and the dragons of the dawn were driven to extinction. In her sorrow, the goddess Calibur wept crystal tears, which would become the Time Orb, and gifted this to her priests. With this power, the druids and healers of the land lifted the curse of madness upon mankind, and defeated death once more. But it was one of these same holy men who would become death's greatest champion. Drakil Tanan scorned the gentle magics of Calibur, and sought the power to dominate. He betrayed the goddess, and learned the powers of necromancy from the Grim Reaper. Naming himself Drak, he invaded the heavens and brought Calibur herself to battle. Though defeated, Drak cut off the goddess's hand and fled. He warped this prize into an unholy artifact called the Astral Hand, and used his necromancy to steal the body of the Lord of Dragons. Now, Drak's armies devastate the land of Uma, and the beast himself is invulnerable whilst he holds the Astral Hand. Only the pure-hearted, incorruptible heroes who are destined to fight evil can stand against Drac by reforging the Time Orb and vanquishing Death's champion for good. Darkstone does a reasonable job of laying out the game's backstory, at least in the manual if not the opening cutscene, but once the game begins it starts to fall short. Darkstone does not have a strong central narrative, not in the sense of being minimalist, which Diablo is a good example of, but in the sense of being incomplete and sometimes totally incoherent. The basics are okay, find the seven crystals, create the time orb, fight Drac, but a lot of the minor details, including the world itself, come across as artificial and perfunctory. Upon starting the game, a guard welcomes you home and commiserates with you over the murder of your parents. Who were your parents? No idea. Who killed them? No idea. Is this ever brought up again? Not to my knowledge. It sounds like the hero's father was some kind of leading figure in your hometown, which I don't believe is ever named, but that's about all I learned. 
In the manual, each of the playable characters are described as having a specific link to one of the four overland regions of Uma, but this doesn't seem to come up in-game. From side quests, you'll learn that there is a king and court magicians, but what they're doing during all of this, I couldn't say. As for the main quest lines, well, one of the random quests involves a prince trying to free the Princess Jasmine, who has been kidnapped by one of Drac's wizards, but I have no idea if they're related to this king, and the player might never see this quest anyway. If someone asked me what happened in Darkstone, I wouldn't really be able to say anything beyond finding crystals and fighting Drac. In terms of the game's general tone, it bounces between a child's bedtime story and a mildly dark fantasy movie. Players who enjoy grimier or more fleshed out fantasy settings may well roll their eyes when they get their first quest from a fairy to free a unicorn who's been captured by an evil wizard. Now, personally, I have no problems whatsoever with whimsical or light-hearted high fantasy done right, but Darkstone just seems like a mess. If anything, it reminded me of Deathspank, an aggressively unfunny hack and slash parody made by Ron Gilbert. It's difficult to say what Delphine were going for here. A couple of reviewers speculated that the story was just lost in translation from the French, but you'd have to ask a French fan about that. I wonder if another possibility is that Delphine were trying to recapture the dichotomy of Heart of Darkness, where they dumped a young schoolboy in a nightmarish alternate reality of shadow creatures trying to violently eviscerate him. Or maybe they were going for the feel of Ridley Scott's legend, with the shift from idyllic fairy tale to dark fantasy. There is a point about halfway through the game that seems to be going for this. I won't spoil it, but it seems slightly incomplete, as NPCs don't actually react to it in any meaningful way. One of the pros of having a single hub area for a player is that writers can focus on how this hub reacts to the player's progress. I think Diablo is a good example of this at its most basic, with the player becoming more and more attached to the town of Tristram, and witnessing the NPCs begin to comprehend the horror that lurks beneath their feet. But Darkstone's NPCs seem thoroughly indifferent to the world around them. It's a real missed opportunity that only solidifies the sense that Uma isn't a real place with real people, just another silly, made-up fantasy name in a video game. So, what can I say about Darkstone? Well, nothing that couldn't be said about any other competent Diablo clone. It's... okay? If you're the kind of player who can stay up all night clicking goblins, there's plenty to keep you occupied in Darkstone, especially if you want to delve into the user-created scenarios. Darkstone is definitely one of those titles worth keeping installed on your laptop for when the internet goes down or you're on a particularly boring business trip, but even in this it has its rough edges. Mechanics like food, aging, or sorting through gold were wisely excised from most hack and slash games for being so muted as to be redundant. Adding them back in, but only as mere irritants, brings nothing to the table except wasting the player's time. And the game's overall mechanics are still far too simplistic to interest more hardcore RPG players. The lack of role-playing options, calcium-deficient skeleton of a narrative, and vacant automatons of NPCs will also leave players looking for a good story in the lurch. For those players, the Darkstone most certainly won't shine. But for hack and slash addicts, it might just sparkle in the mire. Then the dark storm will shine, the dark storm will shine.